Hello, Grinder School. This is Elliot. Elliot here. We're playing three tables. Red is 10 and L. Blue is 5. And the green table is 2 and L. It's actually an anti table. I thought I'd bring this up and see what an anti table is playing like at these games. It is quite fun because you do get into a lot of action and it's sort of forcing players to put more money in. Which is which is quite nice, especially against weaker opponents who are going to pay off a lot more. Um, I have to apologise because I haven't been able to get the PowerPoint finished in time for the aggro regs. There's quite a lot to put in there, um, constructing ranges and how to play post flop and lots of stuff like that. So that's going to be that episode is going to be coming very very soon. And then we'll be moving on to the the passive reg, the weak tight reg, which, to be honest, is quite a lot of players who I imagine is signed up to grinder school. So not only do you learn how to fix your own leaks, but um, you can concentrate on beating up all the other ones who are not doing it. I'm going to flat with my ace king. It's a 36-7, so they're raising range. If it was an aggro reg then I'd be raising for value uh, this is interesting now they've bet half I'm gonna call and then I'm gonna raise turn I think um, opening king eight suited I might just click this to them now flop an open-ended straight draw on table two and I'm gonna call off here you know, if they've got aces or kings, so be it. But ace queen, that's a terrible, terrible stack off. So awesome. This is the kind of overvaluing top pair is a very standard thing for a weaker player to be doing. Uh, king six, I'm going to open as well. This looks like we have a knit to our immediate left, which is great. 11 11 over 18 hands. Actually, we've got 15 15 as well. So this is pretty good. How I do have a feeling this table may break if if our fish leaves. King do so I'm going to fold. I now have. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to fold this, even though I hit my top pair on table three, um, because there's lots of two pairs in their range, and also there's a straight on possible straight. So I think it's, I'm just going to fold that. So this table may break, but we'll see what see what we can get. Um, the small blind is a thirty-one nineteen, so that's a possible fish as well. But it's only sixteen hands. Jack six table three. If I was on the button, I would consider. ISOing, but it's pretty weak, and I'm going to fold. And I don't quite fancy going multi way with that weaker hand. Min steel, table two, with seven, eight off. Fold my ace three there on table one. Possible knit to my left on table two. Yeah, I did think this table might break down. However, we've just had someone who's with eight dollars sit down, so we can hope they're a fish. Flop an open and straight draw. I'm gonna see bet just over half pot. Pocket tens open for three x. Pretty sure. The small blind on table one is a fish as well. And we have an uber fish on table, where are we? Uh, table three, 70, 20. Um, when players limp into me, it's very, very rare that I'll limp. I'll just check. I normally raise and see bet. I prefer to play the aggressive line. And generate fold equity. Yeah, this guy's definitely a fish. 
Um, it's pretty close. I think 3 4 suited, I would call. I don't expect um, the big blind to even raise here, but I don't really want to call. I think it's just on the weaker side, even though I'm getting really good odds. 3 4 suited, I would call, but I'm just going to fold it here. Three eight off is a fold. It's the first time they've raised, which is interesting. The uh, the fish in table one. S king seven suited. I would open the cutoff, but not six king, uh, king seven off. I'm going to flat my king seven suited to a button open from what looks possibly could be an aggressive play. I'm not quite sure yet. I don't really play these stakes, so I don't really have any hands on them, so we're making up population reads as we go along, which is good, because the player pool's so big that you guys probably won't run into each other very often. Pretty dry board. I don't have any back doors on table two, so no hard draws. There is a possible straight draw, but I think this is, even though the board's pretty dry for them, I think probably check fold. I've got better hands to check raise and call with so I'm just going to fold again my 5.7 is not quite good enough I'm just going to let it go but I might have to start adjusting that we have an 86.29 over 7 hands so I'm going to start bumping up my my 3 bet my um, steel size And I'm going to see bet for 10 into 17. Table 2, I'm going to steal with my 3 8 of clubs. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy's quite nitty to my left. Um, interesting that they call. I think I can barrel one more. Try and use some fold equity and try and get hands like sevens and fives and, and things like that to fold uh, and obviously fold to check raise uh, op um, I said a five once the button limps so the second barrel works there the reason that bet's quite good as well is that I've turned an open end and straight draw, so I do have some equity if called. Um, the problem is if they if they check raise, but I'm not getting check raise super often. Five six of fold table two. Ace three to fold in middle position. Probably open it in the cutoff, especially this table. Because it seems quite tight actually. But we do have a fish in the big blind at the moment. 56, 44. Possible fish, maybe just a red running hot. They do have. Is it a gold star? Or a gold star for 5 and L. I'm interested to see how a gold star is playing 5 and L. A6 is close. I'd probably open it in the cut off, in the middle position. I'm just going to pause one second real quick. Sorry about that. One of my uh, boys just woke up and I had to put him back to bed. Um, so, just a quick update. I've had to swap one table out because that broke. And I've added another table of 2 and L because that was a pretty good fish up on table four uh, in the small blind at the moment so now with my pocket fours I'm probably going to try and check them down on table two I think I'm probably going to check fold now and let it go oh I've got my HUD 
coming up for these tables, so we want grinder school HUD. There we go. Okay, oh, still for 2.5x. Table 1 with mace 9. Fold table 2. Fold table 4. I will steal for 2.5 with my king 8 suit offsuit. King 4 off on table 1 is a fold, it's not an ISO. If it was suited, I would be definitely ISOing. Ace 5 suited. Ace, Ace 5 offsuit is a fold as well. So is table 4. Ace 8, if this was suited. I would be three three betting this, but I'm gonna fold now. This is turned into a very nitty table. We still have this player in the big blind on table two, who's a possible fish, but this may be a good table to leave and try and find weaker players. So I might give it one more orbit. See if we can see this player do anything in this small blind at the moment, but probably not in the best table. So that's something that you should be doing. You should be analysing your table constantly. Nine three table one is not good enough to ISO. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sit out the next big blind. King three suited is not good enough to open under the gun, obviously. Wow, I used to play with this player all the time when I was playing these stakes. He's still down at 10 now. I think he's a reasonable winner, but he's never moved up. I haven't seen him anyway. Uh, I'm going to three bet my offsuit aces versus sorry, quickly catch up versus um, small blind open has good blocker ace nine of hearts ace nine suited would be a better call. Um, I can check back this. Ace actually, even though I opened with it, because I have a diamond blocker, the nut diamond, and I don't have to bet all streets to, to get the money in. And also, my ace is on the weaker side, just in case they're check calling ace queen, ace jack. 10 9, I'm going to open on the cutoff table 2. Fold 8-3 off is garbage. 10 jack suited, table 4 is an open. See bet table three versus what looks like a a fishy player. Doesn't hit many that board doesn't hit ranges very well. Ace Jack's a good open. There if so uh, I'm gonna five exit because they're fifty six six. If they were like a, a thirty five six then I'd probably go four X but I think they call in quite often. And I will see bet this board unless they donk lead. I'll probably have to fold. That's interesting. They don't lead small. Okay, I'm going to fold. I'm just trying to work out what to do here. I might raise because they have a capped range and raise to fold. I have an overcard, some backdoor draws. 
my range is, isn't capped. Also, their bet sizing was very small there, so I think it's it's fine to to raise that up there. Oh, I'm going to pull up another table. So what were we here? It was a five and oh, or two five, wasn't it? Two five. See what this one's got to offer. It's five ten and two five. So this is a good way for your lobby, your VPIP at the top. You want the sort of the loosest tables at the top. So if I can just, I might just quickly find the loosest tables. Doesn't really matter what state we're playing. Um, I'm going to take this seat here. Because we have a short stack player, which is probably a fish of some kind. I'm going to change it to red, just so we all the stakes are the same color. Six eight off, even if we're calling. Actually, no, it's not calling. Though. Excuse me, I thought I'm getting confused with my stakes. That's quite a large raise, so it's a fold. But even for a min raise, I'd be, I'd be uh, folding. It's just too weak a hand out of position. In position, probably a call. I will flat my pocket threes. He's ISO'd, which will encourage the button to come across on table one. This does hit their range some. Ace Jack is queen, king queen. So easy fold. Just trying to work out if I can profit to C bet on this board. It's close. I think I might just bet dead on five. You know, people just seem to fold a lot, so I think sometimes over sea baiting is not a bad idea. Queen nine, ace queen, sorry, suited. I'll, I'll three bet. I'll three bet to eighteen instead of ninety because we're in position. It's all one of those tricky ones where it's for value, but it's not polar, so it's not, and it's too good to call. But I think you just need to sort of three bet those for value. I'm going to not take that table. So so I would three bet call four bet with ace queen suited and king queen suited and then I have some stacking off ranges versus aggressive four betters but for these stakes we're really not going to get into that we're just trying to play solid and make good c bets and identify players but I do have a whole strategy for higher stakes when we do have to balance our ranges versus certain regulars and we do have to make five bet jams as bluffs um i will um check back on the button on table one i have completely missed and sometimes excuse me I find some people are flatting with, you know, ace queen there and, you know, jack 10, queen 10, and they're not three betting them. You should really have a three bet or fold strategy from the small blind unless you've got a fish to your left that you can call. So I'm just going to fold this here. This table's becoming quite reggy. Table one. So again, 
depending if this fish sits, if, if a fish does, sits down on the empty seat, this is something that I would consider leaving now. We've sort of made our money, yeah, now, especially purple is my reg tag. So I'm actually going to sit and find another table. We'll swap tables in and out, depending if we think they're um, profitable or not. This has just got too reggy too quickly. You can see that the um, the player to my immediate right set out as well. He sort of noticed it. So it's good. You know, good table selection is key. I'm going to take this seat here. Uh, let's actually put this back up. So. Everything's the same. It's red. Uh, red is my um, aggressive fish, and I have position on them. So I think that's a good, very good plus EVC. We'll, we'll see what the stats are, because sometimes I, I name them quite early, and then they seem to be a different stat, or a different player type. But it's a good indication. Red, red's a great. Aggressive regular is a great to play against. So we'll just have to we'll quickly see when he comes up. Um, open 3x in the cutoff. As I have what's becoming a fish, or definitely is a fish, I should say, in the big blind on table two. Uh, Fold king nine to a shove is just for, um, you know, it's two and now we're not calling that amount off. Um, huh. I definitely had range advantage and I have two over cards and the board is not very connected so I think I can see bet. They do have sets, they can have all the sets and they can have eights and nines. Um, I'm now going to check back and probably check fold. Queen Jack Seaton, I might call actually because I think this player is weaker. So I get the chance to see the flop more often with this decent with a hand. If they're, if they're an aggressive player or a tougher reg, they would um, raise me. I'm going to check back my King Queen. Yeah, pocket threes. It's fine. I'm going to open my ace. Eight heart of hearts because I'm in the effective middle position and we have a fish in the small blind. I miss on table four, and this is probably a check fold. Yeah, so you can call in the small blind with certain hands um, if you think that you're going to get squeezed or you're going to get what's well, going to be very difficult to play out of position, you should be. Um, Raising, I'm definitely calling off with my jacks. This is the second time I've seen them shove. Come on, ace nine. So pretty, pretty good call off there. Run bad, but that's the way it goes. And you, you got to think that you got it in good there, and you can't really worry about the output. The output is the way it is, and the maths over time will help you. Uh, won't, will not, well, it won't help you. It'll just be either correct, and you can, um, and you'll win in the long run. That's the simple, simples of it all. I'm just going to check back on table three. Hang on a second, I'm going to three about this. I'm going to check down. I really, I think this, his range is possibly king jack, uh, king ten. There is some weak hearts in there that's never folding because I checked back the turn. So I think this is just a check back. Yeah, Ace Jack. Ace Jack is never calling a bet anyway, so it's fine. Ace eight definitely opening. 
Also, the good thing with that, that Jack's hand, this is something you've got to bear in mind, is that that player gets to win even though they, they played wrong. So they get to stay in the player pool longer and they get to take, you know, have a win, have a have fun. Without us losing that hand, the fish would go. So it's really important just to sort of understand that uh, attitude towards the fish and not getting, oh, you sucked out of me, you blah, 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 blah. There's just no place for it, really. You know, we should be happy that they stacked off and they even put their money in weak and we got to call with the best hand that will win over the long run. Okay, 6-4. I'm actually going to flat. It's close enough and I think my post flop edge is reasonable enough to call. I can call here and bluff 10s later. I've got a backdoor. Um, backdoor um, spades. I bet something like 20. Bet river as well. That's an interesting card. Because now I actually turn a decent hand. <laughs> this is tough call. Because I bet tens. I bet river and then they called. This could be an odd bluff. But I think I have to call for the price, unfortunately. If they have tens, so be it. Yeah, they're tens. Interesting. I like that. Yeah, they, I think they played that well, actually. I'm going to give them a reg tag. Jack 10. I've got to work out. I think that's right. So Jack 10 offsuit is a good three bet from the small blind versus the cutoff. It's got two blockers for the Jacks and Kings. We don't want to flat and be out of position versus three players with a King Jack's not a great hand to be honest. I'm ISO with um, 9 7 off. I'm going to bow, I'm going to see bet, sorry. Oh, um, gut shot. One over card. And I get called instantly. I've got range advantage. There's, there's definitely got ace queen in their range. But I think I can bet another barrel. Oh, I'm 40. <laughs> I'm typing in 40 because I'm used to playing high. Now this is a check fold. Trying to get them to fold Queen Jack. Things like that. And uh, they can call for another card for a flush draw. And I think I'm possibly going to check fold this now. Oh, that's my telephone. Hang on. Excuse me. Sorry about that. That's my, uh, my wife calling back into the action so table one table three is definitely a sit out I'm actually gonna leave it now find another table it's not very good is that one really good that's a good seat there so finding position on the fish Anybody's got a bronze star, I just immediately tag as a fish. You know, I just think that they just don't know. 
They just don't know that they've got it on, or they just don't play many hands because it's just a brand new beginner. So then definitely not a reg. This guy who came down earlier on table one, who's now in small blind, I had him marked as an aggressive regular. He's not quite an aggressive regular. He's a semi-aggressive fish, 35-18. means they will raise. They're a little bit corly. They will do um, some sea bets. Um, but they're not like an aggro one who's just putting pressure on you constantly. Iso table one ten jack on the button versus limper. Plop top pair, so I'll definitely see bet. Probably see bet reasonably big, something like fourteen. There's a flush draw there, actually maybe just twelve I think. Ten nine I will open on the cutoff. Yeah, the three bettings nowhere near what the high levels are like, I tell you. Reasonable board for me to see bet on. It's got ace high on. The board's not super connected. There is a flush draw. Uh, which I don't block unfortunately, but I'm going to bet anyway. Uh, Ace five is a steal in the cutoff. Table four. Uh, I'm going to fold six, ten six off as two, two loose a steal. I am debating opening this king five. Um, if these, if this player is a little bit tighter, I probably would. Just adjusting to tight players to my left. And we do have a fish in the small blind that I can get action from. Uh, C betting this, I have a gut shot. Uh, one over. Don't block anything. Now I hit my five. I'm just trying to think what they can call with. They can definitely call with some 10x's. They can definitely call with some flush draws. Maybe an ace queen. Um, if they check back. I could possibly think about making a move on the river, but I think, actually think this is a check fold now, considering the board. Table three is getting quite good. Small stack player to my right and a 40 20 with a half stack uh, in the cutoff at the moment. So that's not bad. 9 6 I will 3 bet in position versus the small blind. Reasonable flop actually. They do have some aces in their range, but I think yeah, I think it's still okay to see, but my range is uncapped. Now they've called, I'm definitely gonna check back for a free card. Um I'm just yeah, I don't know just... They have almost always got either. Uh, I don't 
think I can even bet this. I'm pretty sure they've got some Ace X or possibly something like Pocket Tens, but I don't think I can get a fold. And my draw missed, and they might be uh, bluff catching, so I think I have to check back. Yeah, Ace Nine, yeah. I think that's fine. I'm going to continue barreling on this street on table three until they give me reason not to. There's a flush draw out there and they could be calling for. Hmm. Now they check ready so I can fold quite easily. Ace deuce is another f steal. I make it 80 because they've min open. If they were making it uh, 3x, I go 90. So just adjust your three betting sizes to their opens. Queen 10 of spades, I'm going to open under the gun because we have a weaker player in the small blind. Flop well. I'm actually going to bet maybe no, uh, maybe that no, eight's fine. A quick steal there. Not the best turn card. They can have ten jack, ten nine. So I still think there's some value. It will will suck if they raise. I think if they raise, I think it's a pretty easy fold. That's an unbelievably stupid three bet. So sorry, just to point this out. So that my size is this. So if they're bluffing, this 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 bet has to work a hell of a lot to actually um, be profitable. So it makes it and it makes it also easy for me. I don't have to defend as much. I'm going to squeeze with my jacks. I want to fold out the original opener and I want to call from the corner. I don't mind if they fold. Now I have been. Hmm. Hang on a second, we're going to fold this under the gun check this fold this think about this so let's have a think about it I was I actually think I can fold my jacks because there are 15 12 over 86 hands and I was three betting to actually fold them out so I don't have to be in position and get a caller from the the, the um, cold caller behind so I actually think I can fold reasonably confidently there I'd be more happy calling Ace King than Jacks there, because Ace King can flop a good pair over Queens or even Kings, and Jacks are behind quite often to two outs. C bet table four. I'm going to ISO with my 9-8 off, it's pretty loose, but this guy is super loose and he's folding to see bets relatively often. The, the sample size again is small, so everything is kind of caveated, but I think I can get folds quite often. Um, yeah, I th still think a see bet's okay. Um, I'm going to min open with my kings versus, oh actually this guy's not a reg, that should have been a bit more, it's my mistake. I 
it's now they flattered in the um in the small blind. I'm actually gonna check back. Check back one more street. Bet ten on the button versus two players. I think now I can just fold quite easily. I do cap my range there some by not betting, but I think I can shove my jacks versus this player. They they could be doing some crazy stuff with some silly hands. Yeah, the other guys as well. Luckily, I run well. I still think that's fine because they can do some weird. I've seen fish do some weird stuff when they just shove like silly hands. So I did get lucky, but I'm playing their range, not just one hand, so I'm going to bet fold this board with my uh, kings on table three. Can defend pocket nines in position versus the uh, three bet. This one I wish I had. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna bet. Defend from ace king, king queen. Just try and take it down there. Quickly check how long we've been running for. Okay. King Queen's a decent hand as well. Hopefully, this guy will be a little bit tilted as um, on the table one on the button. Yeah, I think this is like a bet, bet, bet situation now. Um, aces is good, but that's too big a bet. I bet I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet that if I was bluffing. I bet that that was the wrong, wrong amount. I should have. That was meant to be smaller than that. King Jack of Diamonds. Hold on. <laughs> Hang on a second, that's one of the. Uh, I'm probably going to time out by the time, but that's one of the. Uh, the King Jack of Diamonds is a, uh, is a fold in my undergun range. Yeah, that's one of the slides from the aggressive fish that I'm making. Uh, this is check call. And now lead table one. Um, I will steal king four suited. Six, seven, I might actually flat because I'm closing the action. Uh, da, 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 check call, I think, table one now. Interesting what he had. Ace deuce. Okay. I think King Eight suited. Is it King Eight suited upwards in the cutoff? Yeah, King Eight, King Seven suited upwards. 
is my uh, is my four bet range. Just quickly thinking about this hand. Now they've checked. I might actually bet on table three. Reason being is that most people barrel a flush draw, and the small blind didn't lead on a king or a flush. So I and also I have backdoor equity of, of a straight, so I don't mind leading as a bluff on that board. Right, I'm going to sit out on all on all tables. I'll slowly wind down. Eight sevens of steel, table one versus very tight folding regs. Six, 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 jack six versus a sort of an aggressive player is actually a fold in my range. See about the board. Now I get called. <clears throat> trying to work out what I'm getting called by. I do have showdown advantage, so I think I can check. I think it's okay to fold. There's definitely eight nine in their range. I think I'll fold that. It's close. Pocket servers, I'm just debating if I should call or not. I think it's close. Probably borderline okay. Oh, I missed the bet. Um the reason is um, I, I wouldn't normally call this against a reg, but versus what to what looks like an aggressive player, a thirty-one twenty-nine. Um, obviously, I flopped a set, so I'm never going anywhere. I'm just going to tank for a bit, and then call. But versus an aggressive player, I think I can um, call that ever so slightly wider. I'm gonna let them barrel off. There's no need. There's no reason to raise if they have a bluff range because they're gonna fold their bluff range, and I crush their value. So it's just a simple call. Now they've checked. I'm just gonna go all in and hope they call. Tank a little bit longer. Unlucky dude. So the main thing to take away from that hand is that yes, they obviously had queens, and um, I, that they had their value portion of the range, but they can be bluffing with worse hands. So you don't want to raise and get them to fold those hands. Essentially, what you do is they fold all their bluffs and they call with all the. Uh, all the value you want to try and get them to barrel off with all their value and with all their bluff sorry so you you essentially get value from both parties okay just finishing off here du -du -du, last hand I'll probably just sit out here as well okay guys um, I'm quickly going to have a look at my stats and uh, see sort of how I played I think it's interesting so I'll be back in a sec so this is the session. This is the graph as a session. We did win, which was good. Obviously, very small sample, and we got lucky jacks against aces versus a weird fish. Um, but I still think I was fine to get in because they can have all sorts of weird junk, and I've seen fish do like crazy stuff like that. So again, like I said in the hand, we're not playing aces there. We're playing their range, and I think it's fine to call off jacks there. Cool, okay, so that's the session. Nice 
flat red line um, meaning that we're not blinding away our stacks or our win rate we're keeping our we're keeping our non-showdown winnings nice and nice and flat and not paying off the, our, our blinds so that's one of my one of the things that I've sort of worked on quite a lot is to have a flat flat red line in my game um, I can go into that in more detail I'm actually going to do a series on um, how to how to get a flat red line because there's loads and loads of things you can do and it's um, one of the episodes that me and characters did a long time ago when he um, picked apart my game um, yeah so um, I also ran um, 2724 so very aggressive um, basically an aggressive regular quite tough um, three bets quite high there um, fold to restills in the 60s I would like to try and get this down to 55 for me but it seems to be constantly on 60 at the moment sometimes excuse me sometimes higher but I do open a lot more wider um, and sometimes possibly could open not as wide in certain situations which then I am forced to fold so that's a leak I'm trying to plug myself but uh, yeah so there we go good uh, I think a reasonable session I think I covered a lot there any questions please ask you know PM me about anything and I will get back to you um, if I haven't explained anything at all please write in the comments and I'll answer them because sometimes I have a tendency to jabber on a little bit while I'm trying to think of what to do when I'm playing a hand so I can um, explain things a little bit further if you like all right well thank you guys take care see you next week bye